So we've got an injury. Yusuf Nurkic is going to miss the rest of this season, the playoffs, and we're going to see if he's able to get back in at the beginning of next season, midway through next season, something in between and all that. So let's talk about um, how will this affect the Blazers on this playoff run, because I think there's reason to believe that before this injury, and maybe still after it, that these guys could really be something in the postseason, assuming that Terry Stotts is able to adjust to basic pick-and-roll defense, which he was not able to do last year. So let's talk about this. Um, it helps that they've got a nice buffer to the fifth seed, about a two-and-a-half game uh, difference between them and the Jazz. Of course, they're going to want to hold on to the three, especially if the Warriors are still going to be number one, because at that point, the Blazers might be able to get all the way to the conference finals. They could also lose in round one. I mean, the Western Conference is loaded, of course, but these guys are right in the thick of all this. So I think the best thing to do is just look at potential playoff matchups. Um, so right now, if things stayed the way they were, the Blazers would be facing the Clippers in the first round. Do I think they can beat the Clippers without Yusuf Nurkic, which assumes that Ennis Cantor and Zach Collins are the two centers who are playing the most, and if they wanted to get really wild, they might be able to try some, like, Aminu at center, although I wouldn't bet on that one too much. Yeah, I think they could beat the Clippers. The big fear would be Lou Williams just killing Ennis Cantor in the pick and roll. Because Lou will pull up on you... Uh, Every single time. He doesn't care whether it's a three, a mid-ranger, but he's also just so crafty at getting by defenders who especially can't move the way the Cantor can, which means you would have Zach Collins in there instead, and Collins is probably going to be better at that than Cantor would be. I think the fear with Collins, though, is can he mix it up with Montrez Harrell and Zubach on the boards? I think there definitely is a question there with him because he's a slim dude, but... In terms of being able to defend Lou Williams, which is probably the most important thing when it comes to facing the Clippers, I do think Zach Collins would have a chance there. And then from there, I mean, Dame is still the best player in that series. Granted, Patrick Beverly would certainly be motivated to go up against the guy, but number one, I don't think Beverly is as good defensively as Drew Holiday. Sure, he may show up in the highlights more often, but day to day, I don't think he is what Drew is. And I'd like to think that the Blazers learned from their mistakes in that series. They could have done things like, uh, they could have had CJ set screens for Dame, so when they trap, CJ is now open. Or it would have resulted in a switch, so then it would have got somebody else on Dame or something. But they were just stubborn and they kept doing the same thing over and over again, which just didn't work. Should also mention Shea and uh, Garrett Temple, two guys who are no slouches on defense, who could also give uh, these two Portland guards some trouble. I think their options are still there enough to go at the Clippers. Uh, but even so, if Ennis Cantor gets played off the floor completely and Zach Collins is just getting destroyed on the boards, then that's of course not good. Uh, some on-off numbers for you. When Nurkic was in the game, the Blazers' defensive rebounding percentage was like third or fourth in the league. And with him not in the game, it would dip all the way down to like 20 something And the number, or that number, maintains itself when Zach Collins was in the game. So it's going to take a team effort on the boards, uh, no matter who is uh, the Blazers' opponent. Unless Cantor can actually survive on defense. And if that's the case, then your defensive rebounding, well, all rebounding problems really, would be fixed. But we've seen Cantor in the playoffs enough times to assume... It's going to be tough to play him a lot of minutes. Uh, let's see, if the Blazers end up facing the Jazz... Well, the thing they would have going for them is CJ and Dame are two of the best pull-up shooters in the league, and Gobert doesn't want to step out onto the perimeter. But in terms of the center position, um, Gobert would maybe eat Zach Collins alive. Now, I guess there's a chance for Collins to get Gobert back on the other end if he's going to make his jump shots, but... If you're going to make me pick a winner between those two, I think Gobert is going to win that matchup. Uh, now, I think Cantor would have a better chance of dealing with Gobert on the boards, and I actually think there's a chance Cantor could go at Gobert in the low post. But, um, you know, same thing as always with Cantor. Can he survive against Donovan Mitchell in the pick and roll? And I think Joe Ingles will have opportunities to go at him. And hell, Ricky Rubio, I think, could get by Cantor. So, yeah. 
And I think a lot of these things can be said about OKC or the Spurs as well. The chances of the Blazers running into those two teams is a little less than the Jazz or the Clippers, but I think it's all still pretty similar. I mean, Westbrook, PG, and Schroeder being able to go at Cantor possession after possession, that's a thing. Zach Collins, can he hold up against Steven Adams of all people? I mean, he might be able to hold up against Nerlens Noel, but I don't think that's going to be the difference between you winning the series or not. I should mention Myers Leonard's existence while I'm here. I don't think Myers Leonard is going to matter that much. So there you go. If we see the Blazers run into the Spurs, and at this point, the odds would suggest that does not happen, but you never really know. Because uh, the Spurs are two games out of that Jazz Clippers 5-6 thing going on. Hey, to be fair, Ennis Cantor actually was really good against LaMarcus Aldridge and the Spurs that won playoff series with the Thunder. Obviously not the same teams and all that, but I guess that opens the door up for that happening maybe a little bit. I wouldn't bet on it, but I, it happened kind of once. And maybe you could make an argument that because DeRozan and Aldridge like to do so much from within like 15 feet, that that gives Cantor a little better of a chance of surviving on defense. I don't think I'm there with you on that one, but I could picture that argument being made. And for Zach Collins' sake against San Antonio, I mean, I don't think there's anybody on the Spurs who's really a brute force at the five. But still, Zach Collins would have to not get overwhelmed physically, and there's still questions if he can do that. So, yeah. As far as if the Blazers can get by whoever they may end up facing in round one, if we could see them going up against, as of right now, it would be the Nuggets, assuming the Nuggets beat the Thunder. Wow, the Western Conference is loaded. Um, that's a tough one. If Ennis Cantor could play longer than four minutes a game in that series, I would be actually kind of shocked. And if you make me pick a winner of that series right now, and we don't know if the Nuggets are going to get to round two, of course, but if they did, I think I would pick Denver. And if Nurkic was playing, hey, maybe I would actually go with um, with Portland. So, yeah. But again, you know, I've been questioning the Nuggets pretty much the whole year, talking about is Gary Harris and Jamal Murray, are they good enough to win playoff series and all that? Because you assume Jokic isn't going to be able to do it all by himself. So... I'd certainly leave the uh, the door open for Portland getting to the West Finals, but I'm not going to bet on it. Certainly not after this Nurkic injury, because, I mean, he was their best combination of a guy who could be respectable on offense and on the boards and still be a defensive player. And now Zach Collins and Ennis Cantor, they're kind of specialists in a way. So, yeah. As far as Nurkic's future, I mean, going through some reports of doctors talking about the injury... It doesn't seem that horrible. It seems like, yeah, it's going to take a minute, and there's a decent chance he doesn't play at the beginning of next season, but there doesn't seem to be this out for 12 months and then we're questioning whether he can get back to what he was. Um, it seems like he's going to be cool, and we'll just say maybe by game 30 or 40 of next season he'll be back to his old self. And at that point, I think he's fine. I think the Blazers will be fine, but... For this specific playoff run, yeah, I think it definitely hurts them.